Well, it is so cold, I am wearing a sweater, I've got socks on my toes, but that's not gonna stop me. <laughs> We're gonna talk about the spring pattern launch and the official launch of Scrappy Patterns. You guys are like really wobbly. Let's fix you. Okay. You're still wobbly. My desk is wobbly. Okay. That's what we resolved to. All right. So Scrappy Patterns is the pattern company I am launching. We, um, while everyone joins, I'll just like go over a little bit about Scrappy Patterns. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. The pattern company's name is Scrappy Patterns. Um, I have created an Instagram account for them, so that way when you like buy the patterns and make the thing, you can tag Scrappy Patterns, and I really want that to be like a community building, sharing thing. So I am really excited about that. My nose is running. Oh, please say that this will stop. Okay. Um, yeah, so Scrappy ba Patterns has their own Instagram. Once I get better worn photos than ones that I've taken in my house, I'll start posting more pictures of the um, patterns from this launch. There are six patterns in this launch. I should have given myself an outline and an agenda. We are going to like be bouncing all over the place. Okay, Scrappy Patterns, Instagram. Um, I am thinking about making a tier on my Patreon, which will give you one free pattern a month, and I'll just like cycle through the available stock. If that is something you are interested in, um, I will be making that tier before the pattern launch. The official pattern launch is on Monday, April 5th. So yes, it is on Monday. I'm so excited. Um, I will start listing all of them on Etsy. Um, I currently do not have my own website or personal domain, so I thought Etsy would be the easiest place to list everything for now. Um, I've been told they do really well with like the whole digital download thing, so we're just gonna go for that for ease of use. Um, what other things? Okay, all of the patterns are one size and gridded. So you will get a pattern printout that'll look something like this, um, plus all of the write-up instructions. So you can scale it up from here. There's um, a couple of videos I know out there about how to scale up gridded patterns. Um, I chose to go with gridded patterns because I currently do not have the skill to offer you graded patterns. And I wanted everyone to have the opportunity to be able to adjust the pattern to fit their size. So the one size in gridded was the most inclusive thing I could think of doing at this time. In the future, depending on how things grow, and if I can bring someone on that can like braid patterns for me, we might have graded patterns. I'm not holding my breath for that. That is like something that's going to be like years down the road. Um, I'm not expecting that. Um, and I am, oh, I'm going to say this a lot. I am super excited about this. Um, if you guys remember my video at the beginning of the year where I set goals, one of my goals was to be self-sustaining by the end of the year. And this pattern launch, I feel like, is going to be a huge part of that. So, yeah. I'm just... <sighs> okay. Um, do we want to keep talking? Or um, I do have some, like, questions and things that you guys wanted me to talk about. So we can keep talking about all of that, or I can show you the patterns. I mean, I'm not showing you the patterns, I'm showing you the garments made from the patterns. Give me some feedback, let me know what you guys want, I'm open to both. I'm also like celebrating with some Gatorade and water, and I used to have a lot more jelly beans in here, but I ate them all. Well, most of them. So. All right. Um, not getting any current feedback from you, so I'm assuming you don't care. Let's, both is fine. Yeah, cool. Um, let's talk about the garments, because I don't want to run out of time talking about those. Um, and then we'll talk more about, um, like, price point and future goals and other stuff and like if you guys have questions about anything at the end we can go over it then cool 
Um, I'm going to be referring to the patterns by their pattern name. I have chosen to go with a numbering system over giving them individual names just because that seemed more logical to me. Um, so the patterning system will have SP for scrappy patterns, the year the pattern was made, so all these will be SP21, and then they'll go in order of creation after that. So that's my numbering system. This will also allow people to like look up correlating YouTube videos because a lot of these will get making YouTube videos along with them. Um, I know the first three patterns for sure I don't know about. Um, and SP2105 will. And for, okay, so I get the, um, the shirt pattern and the skirt pattern mixed up. I forget what one is five and which one's four. Pretty sure the shirt is five and the skirt is four. I could be wrong. Everything is clearly, will be clearly labeled in the listings for you guys. So let's start with this. You guys have probably recognized this dress. This is my birthday dress. I wore it to make my birthday cake, um, which I posted about on Instagram. And like, this was actually one of my more successful videos this year. So I'm really glad you guys like it. Um, but this is, um, what's it called? This is SP2101. So this is the first pattern. Um, this dress and the excitement around it was really the first one to make me go, oh, like maybe now's the time to start putting out patterns to just like make it really more accessible to people. Um, so I am um, putting this out as a pattern. This is going to be one of the more expensive ones. Um, I think at currently where things stand, you'll be able to tell the skill level of a garment based on the price point. Um, I don't want to price any of my patterns over $20. I want them to all be like very affordable and comparable with other independent designers. Um, so they're all going to be like less than $20, but I can't guarantee that they're going to be like less than 10. So um, I think I currently have this one priced at $20. Um, just because of like the complexity of it and everything else. So I just, I, was, I love my birthday dress. Can you tell? Okay, I need to take off my sweater. So these overalls are SP2102. Um, and they're not showing the greatest fit because I have Joe and he's asleep, so I'm not going to move him. Um, but you can either choose to have fixed or non-fixed buttons right here. Um, I chose to have mine fixed because I didn't want them to accidentally come undone. Um, but it does have a double button opening on either side, which I really like. It has pockets, nice big pockets. It has back pockets. I just, it's a really comfortable thing. Um, it actually does need to sit like an inch lower. I just cut my straps too short. So it's not sitting where it needs to, but it honestly, it fits, it's comfortable. So even if you don't get your straps at the right length, it's still a good pattern. It's also super high waisted. I don't know if you can tell, like, I don't I just have such like, um, it's called being long waisted because here's where my natural waist is. So I kind of have a short torso but I have a long waist because that's not even where my hips are. My hips are like down here. So talking about body proportions. <laughs> so those are the overalls. Um, I did originally make them in the navy, fab navy denim, which you guys saw, um, but I wasn't super happy with the fit. So I changed a few things on the pattern and I remade them. So you guys are getting the revised pattern um, and I'm like super happy with them. Um, the birthday dress is probably my favorite, but these overalls are like probably the most practical, like out of everything I've created. Well, that's a lie. The, the shirt pattern is probably the most practical. So your birthday dress is amazing. Thank you. Um, I'm thinking about putting the overalls at like a $15 price point, um, which 
is what the rest of the patterns will be unless I like tell you differently. Um, I did offer like multiple views in the same pattern to try to make it like worth the cost. So like specifically for the shirt pattern, you're getting like three different views within the shirt pattern. So at a $15 price point, you're really paying like $5 per shirt pattern. So that's what I tried to do. Um, just cause like, I want you guys to feel like there's value in the patterns. All right, SP2103 is my Easter dress, spring, Easter, whatever you want to call it. Um, let's move you out of the way. Oh, I forgot how broken Betsy is. Okay. So, can we adjust white balance? No? Okay. So I really like this one. It is a crossbody front. It has a little bit of a lower neckline that I typically go for, but it still is super cute. Let me sit down so you guys can like actually see my face. Um, and then it also like crosses at the arms, which I think is fun. And then it's just um, a three paneled skirt. You can also do a two or a four paneled skirt options up to you and how full you want it. Um, I just concentrated um, like two back panels and two panels in the back and one in the front to give it a very full but like still a line kind of silhouette. Um, both the Easter dress and my birthday dress have pockets in the side seam. So yeah, um, it is a good T length length for this one. I'm just, I'm super super happy with it. Um, I do have a option in the pattern. Where did it go? Ah, right here. So the second view B for SP2103 um, is to do a blouse version with a peplum. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen me make this shirt. Um, and it's really cute. I think it goes super cute with like jeans and slacks and is really feminine. Um, but still has like all of the key features of the dress pattern. So if you're not really a dress person, but you really like the way the bodice has looked, this version is still really cute and feminine. Um, and this is view B in the same pattern. Cool. Well, it's like the first three patterns, guys. Are you excited? I'm gonna eat some chocolate and then we'll talk about the last three. Oh, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna switch over the garments on my dress forms. So I think 04 is a skirt, so let's talk about those. Betsy doesn't have a bottom, so I won't be able to put skirts on her. Looks like Alice doesn't really want to wear skirts either. Should I just hold these up? Would that be better? You guys have probably seen the skirts that I wear. Let's move. Cool. So you guys have probably seen the skirts that I wear. They're very simple, kind of an A-line shape. Um, and that's definitely what all of the SP2104 patterns are. They all have the same base, which is a two panel that either gets gathered or pleated in the front. 
um, and then gets gathered down with an elastic waistband in the back. This makes them um, really flexible for a lot of different waist sizes um, as well as like really comfortable. Um, there are two pocket options. So this one has um, in seam pockets which they have on both the dresses that I showed you guys before or oh, nope that's not what I need or you have slant pockets which are I don't know how to describe these they're not in the seam they're like cut into the panel so those are the two pocket options that come with the pattern um, and it is clearly labeled like which view each thing is and like what the steps are. So if you wanted to do, um, okay, so the other option that I have is to do like a faux button closure down the front like I did with this one. And this specific pattern has the slant pockets, but if you said, hey, slant pockets aren't really my thing, it is clear in the label, I mean clear in the pattern, um, which are the instructions for the slant pocket and which are the instructions for the um, inseam pocket, which I think I just have labeled as like pocket. Um, so that way like, you can customize and mix and match within like all the options of the pattern so that's exciting i do really like this skirt i love the faux button closure um i think i want like a couple more because it gives a really cute like vintage day dress look when you like pair it with like a matching button up so i'm actually wearing the matching but button up to this skirt and when i wear them together it just looks really cute and vintagey so, yeah, those are the three skirt options, which, depending on how you look at it, is like two different skirt options, but I feel like you can mix and match with like the different pocket options and then the faux button closure or the not faux button closure and come um, as well as like whether you pleat or gather the front panel into the waistband and come up with like six different skirts that all look kind of similar, but not really. So that, that is a thing. I feel like I am out of breath from like moving around a lot. So did I miss any comments? I love the Easter dress and blouse. I do too. Um, I have a feeling that that's going to be one of the more popular patterns. I mean, based on no hard data, but I feel like that's going to be one of the more po popular patterns. Um, yeah. So the um, SP2101, the birthday dress, I feel like is more of like an intermediate to advanced pattern. The SP2102, so the overalls, are more of an intermediate because it's just a lot of technical sewing. Um, but the rest of these patterns really are beginner patterns. And I wanted to start with beginner patterns um, because I'm really trying to make sewing more accessible for everyone. And the way to do that is to give basic patterns that aren't intimidating to start with. So the SP2103, the Easter dress, um, looks intimidating, but it's really not. Um, because it has the ingrown sleeve, you don't have to worry about setting in sleeves. Everything is clearly marked on how you need to line it up on the pattern. It's just tried to make it as like straightforward and easy to do as possible. Um, the plans I have for the winter pattern launch, those patterns are going to be a little bit more complicated. <laughs> um, and I think some of the fall patterns are going to be a little bit more complicated too. But I wanted to give like a variety because we're not all in the same place sewing wise. So, there you go. Um, speaking of easy beginner patterns, let's talk about the shirts. So, SP2105. I really hope I'm getting the shirt and skirt numbers remembered correctly. I should have taken notes. But like I said, everything will be clearly labeled in the listings. So that way you guys won't have to like wonder, am I getting the shirt or the skirt pattern? Realistically, you should get both because I think they're awesome. Okay, 
shirts. If you guys have been hanging out with me on lives for a while, you will recognize the hedgehog shirt. We made this together on a live um, a couple months ago. Um, so this basic ingrown sleeve or all in one sleeve pattern is the base model um, for the SP21 arms. Uh, there are three views, like I said before, which I will show you. Um, you guys saw me make this shirt in like an hour. I timed myself when I was making the others. I made the collared shirt in an hour too. This is like, as far as shirt patterns go, this is as basic as you can get. So, um, the regular scoop neck is really nice. It's really comfortable. Um, I add tails or like the swoopy thing onto the bottom of all my shirts because I prefer my shirts to be tucked and stay tucked. The tails help with that. Um, and then we do have the optional cuff. So not all of the shirts need a cuff, but it is optional and it is included in um, like the instructions. So, okay, is this what I want now? One of the views of that pattern is to have a gathered neckline. So this gives it kind of like a peasant top feel without it being like super blousey. Um, it really is just a cute little gathered neckline. So I really like it because it's just gives a little bit of detail and a little bit of variety to like an already existing pattern. Um, it's just like that little extra step to, what am I looking for? To like change things up and add some variety but still give you the same basic comfort and pattern that you like with the one hour blouse. So that's what this is. I just think it's super cute. And it has the cuffs on it, which I just, you guys know me, I like the cuff option. Alright, the last one in there is the button-up version, and I chose to grab one that I wasn't wearing so I could actually show you. Um, this is probably my favorite style of button-up to make because I can literally make it in an hour. It takes less fabric than a traditional button-up. Um, like about two yards will get you a button-up. Whereas if you want like a long sleeve traditional button-up, you're looking at like two and a half, three yards. So it's just a really cute, simple throw on thing for summer. Um, this does, again, like it'll step up your sewing skills. So you'll be putting on like a button placket You'll learn how to put a collar together um, and I really structured the pattern this way so that way like a beginner beginner could get it and make the one hour blouse um, or like the basic scoop line, scoop neck blouse and then they could make the gathered neck one and then they could like when they feel comfortable after sewing for a little while make the button up and give themselves like a really good foundation for different styles of blouses that are all handmade because who doesn't want to have a handmade wardrobe? I mean, realistically, you could not want to, but I mean, that's kind of my goal. And I'm pretty much there, which is kind of awesome. All right, I need to breathe for a second. <coughs> I keep coughing. It's not because I'm sick. It's because I keep getting things stuck in my throat. Because it's that time of year when everything wakes up and my body hates it. Okay, I keep getting notifications on my phone and I need to go away. We're talking about important things. Okay, so that is the five patterns. So the sixth pattern is the bunny pinafore. Uh, which is also going to be SP2106. So let me grab that and put it on Betsy. Um, I wanted to add in a pinafore because I've really fallen in love with pinafores recently and wanted 
to just have something fun in this pattern launch. Um, and you know, I saw the fabric and I knew that I just needed it in my life. So I, I've got it. I think we can actually blame the fabric for this pinafore being in existence. Okay, so it does have kind of like a full front bib, which I really liked. Uh, it ends just before like the halfway point. Um, so looking from front on, it does just look like a sleepless dress, which I think is fun. But then you turn around and you have this wonderful V in the strap, which I think is really flattering. Um, and then you have um, a zip where you zip it closed. I don't know, I just, I really like it. Um, it is a true like A-line skirt. Um, I tried to do, add more fullness in the back because if you're like me and you have like, a sway back. I don't know if you guys can like see my sway back. Um, having a little bit of fullness at the back to help go over this is helpful. It's just a little bit more flattery. So there are pleats in the back to just help with that and general swishiness. So yeah, I think it's really cute. I might end up with a couple more in this pattern. I haven't decided yet. So. It's super cute. I thought so. I just, I really like the back view. I think that's my favorite part of this one. Um, just to, you know, it's just different than the other pinafores that I've made because it's like wider straps in the V instead of like the thin straps that cross. So, I just, it's fun. Um, it does have a small little waistband that just helps keep everything clean. So, Long waisted and sway back, that sounds familiar and helpful to have patterns adjusted for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like I said before, all the patterns are going to be one size and gridded. They are all going to be my size um, or the size that like, um, what's it called? The size that I made the garment. So you will notice that SP2101 is bigger than like the rest of the patterns because I made that one bigger. Um, um, but like all the patterns will have like the finished garment size written on there. So that way there's no guessing. Um, I'll also make sure to like include that in like the listings, uh, like the descriptions on the listings because it's important that people know what size of thing they're buying, especially if they're not completely comfortable, like altering the patterns on their own. So, very cottage core, I love it. Yeah, so I wanted this first launch to kind of feel, I mean, I don't consider my style to be cottage core. I feel like I lean more towards vintage, but I know that cottage core pulls a lot from like the vintage and historical vibes, which I pull a lot from. So I can see how it comes across as cottage core. Um, but yeah, that's everything we're doing in the first launch. I, I'm getting so out of breath. I need to like start going for runs or something so I can like talk continuously on these lives. <laughs> but yeah, um, I really wanted to give everyone kind of basic options for their wardrobe so that way it wouldn't be like I'm buying SP2101, the birthday dress. Um, to like treat myself. It could be like I'm buying these patterns to learn how to sew um, and to really kind of just integrate things into handmade items into your wardrobe. So that was kind of the plan between behind this first pattern launch. So let's adjust you guys because we're going to move back to just talking. Not push my tripod over the edge. Cool. So did you guys, before I like go to the listed questions, did you guys have any questions, comments, concerns about the pattern launch so far? Just lots of love. Oh, my ears feel like they're getting infected too. 
I hate this time of year, but I love it too. Okay. We're celebrating with jelly, jelly beans. All right. So I'm probably gonna reiterate things, but I did ask for questions. Um, so I'm going to go over my notes. I've got notes. I'm looking down, I'm looking at my notes. Okay. So the question was, where did I get the idea? Um, so like I said, I wanted to be self-sustaining this year. Patterns are a big part of that. Um, if you would have asked me what I wanted to do when I was eight years old, I would have said I want to be a costume designer. Um, if you would have asked me what my life goals were when I was 16, I would have told you that owning a pattern line was one of my big lofty goals that I never expected to have happen. Um, and if you like are inside my head right now, you know that I'm kind of like, my inner me is just so pleased that this like pattern launch is happening and it's becoming a thing and that like I can make my dreams a reality. So. Um, the idea of having patterns isn't like a new thing for me. Um, I just didn't think it would be possible at all in my life. And so making it a possibility is kind of fantastic. Um, it's named Scrappy Patterns. If you can't tell, my channel is Scraps and Sequins. So I wanted something that was similar and recognizable to my YouTube channel but also something that could like be its own thing and stand on its own. Um, so I came up with scrappy patterns because like sequin patterns just does not feel like me, but scrappy patterns did. And I'm, I really like that name. I think it's super cute. All right. General inspiration. Um, I look up a lot of inspiration on vintage pieces and vintage patterns on Instagram, not on Instagram, well, on Instagram and as well as on Pinterest. So uh, it's something that like I keep looking for and I figure that like if I really like something, someone else really likes that thing. And so making it accessible to them is something that is needed. Um, I have also been like designing my own things and patterning my own things since I was about 16, if we're being honest. Um, and so I'm able to like look at things and be like, I really like the pleats that are on the shoulder, but I don't like the ruching. So we'll change, so I'll change things around and like figure out what I want to do and stuff. And just kind of like come up, like infuse a bunch of elements together and come up with like a semi original thing. So. That's kind of like my general inspiration and how I found inspiration for a lot of these pieces. I honestly can't tell you where this pinafore came from. I think I just kind of like threw patterns together and it just came out. Yeah, I just, sometimes things happen like that. All right, my vision for scrappy patterns is to do seasonal launches. Um, I honestly expected to only la launch with like four patterns and then like it turned into six, which I'm not upset about. I'm actually really happy with. Um, but from here on out, I think I will only launch like three to five pat new patterns every season. Um, mostly because I don't want to set the expectation of like we will do more patterns every launch. And then eventually burn myself out and not have time to do the big fun projects for my YouTube channel that I want to do. I really want both my YouTube channel and Scrappy Patterns to be sustainable. And I am a one woman show. So I need to be able to find that middle ground uh, and set boundaries for myself. So the three to five pattern in future launches is a semi hard boundary, um, which I will be sticking to. So that's, you can expect that um, seasonally from here. So um, I already have all five patterns picked out for what I want to do for the summer launch. I have three, three patterns planned for the fall launch. Um, and then I'm thinking about doing menswear in fall and I'm so excited, like slacks, vest, button up, variations on those. I'm kind of excited. Anyway, the winter 
um, pattern launch, I'm also thinking about just making really frilly, girly party dresses because I already have one made and I have one planned. So like that, that seems like a good idea to me too. Anyway, so those are my plans, spoilers, for like future launches. Um, the, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry everyone. Um, the summer launch is going to be, um, would the Joe Kate become an available pattern? No, because that is an American Duchess pattern. Um, that's a free pattern that American Duchess has offered via their Patreon. Um, and they, I didn't alter it enough to have it be considered an original pattern. Um, that's part of the whole like ethical thing that I'm trying to figure out with these patterns on like how many steps away from a block, block or a base pattern does it need to be to be considered my own. Um, I don't consider the Joe Cape far enough away to be considered my own. Um, but if you guys do see things that I make on my channel and want them to be a pattern, definitely like leave a comment, send me a message. I am willing to make patterns of everything that I feel I can ethically make a pattern of. Um, so my spring fox shirt with the ruffle on it, um, as well as the pin tuck shirt, are, I'm planning on including them in the summer launch. Um, if those are like the other two that I've created in the past that I felt like people would want. So I will include those in the summer launch if you guys have any other things. Um, let me know as long as there's not like an already existing pattern that I haven't. Um, yeah, as long as I have like reasonably changed it enough, I guess, to be my own pattern. Um, like I would feel comfortable making a pattern. Um, fabric recommendations are in the pattern, um, and, um, I give, like, a general, because, like, I feel like the weight of the fabric matters more than the fiber content, um, I will put usually, like, a light weight and then whatever fabric I used for, um, the sample. Um, so, like, for the button-ups, I put medium to lightweight cotton, um, I think I put medium to lightweight denim for the overalls, um, lightweight sheer for the birthday dress for the overlay fabrics. Um, I do need to go through all of the patterns and put in approximate yardage um, because like, I don't entirely remember how much yardage I put in each garment. <laughs> I will keep closer track of that for the future, I promise. Um, but it's also going to change as you, like, change the size of the pattern. It'll change how much yardage you need, so. Okay, I think that's all. My favorite patterns. So I have my favorite patterns, and then I have my most practical patterns. And I think the um, shirt pattern, so, and the skirt pattern, so SP. 2104 and SP2105 um, are going to be the most practical. Um, and then from there, it's just kind of what it is. I think my favorite one is honestly SP2101, the birthday dress. Um, I just, I really like that dress. So, let's see, technical bits and hard. So, like, I think that question was referring to, like, the technical parts of creating patterns. Um, and it really isn't that hard. I, um, the only thing I had to adjust to do, excuse me again, Who? The only thing I had to adjust to do was actually putting my patterns onto paper. Oh, excuse me. Um, and then I have a big cutting mat that I then take pictures of the pattern pieces on the cutting mat and then I can transfer them to the gridded paper from there. So it wasn't really like anything technical or hard. Um, it was just like figuring out my process on how to get things. Um, and, but this also means that I have a paper copy for myself so that way later down the road I could be like, you know what, I really like this like floral fabric. I think it would make a great pair of overalls. I already have that. 
pattern and I don't have to reject the pattern, which is a new thing for me because I'm so used to making one-off garments that like I'd have to redraft it if I wanted another pair and now I don't. So I kind of like that. Um, we've talked about scrappy patterns in the name and the future plans. Um, the pattern launch is on April 5th. Uh, which is Monday. Um, I am posting a video that day. Um, it's going to be like a spring lookbook. It's going to show you how all these garments move and fit on like the actual body they were meant to move and fit on. Well, not all of them. I don't have the overalls or the birthday dress, but they already have dedicated videos on my channel. So all the other garments will have um, are featured in that video um, and I will have a link to um, the Etsy page where I'm listing all the patterns in that video so you can keep an eye out for that um, I will also be like blasting it all over Instagram so if you don't want to like dig through the description of my video it'll be on Instagram all right price point like I said um, the current business model is between 10 and 15 dollars um, that might change as I produce more patterns and like the popularity of them. I will play with that. Um, the whole goal is to make this a self is to make this like a sustainable income. Um, and like having things priced where I have it gives me very clear numbers on what I need to hit that sustainability point. But like I said, in the future, price points can change, and I will let you guys know if that does. So personalization. I honestly am so excited for you guys to like get access to these patterns and then to be like, well, I actually just want to like bedazzle one half of like SP2103 um, and like mix and match. I'm just, I'm so excited to like see what you guys make with these patterns because I know how I've made them. I know how I style them. I know how I think of them. Um, but like you guys could have other ideas and you guys could like look at the Easter dress and be like, you know what? Those shoulders, perfect place for bling. Or be like, that belt um, on the Easter dress, perfect place for bling. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited to see how you guys interpret my patterns. So, oh, I just, it would be so cute to add maybe like rhinestones to the cuff on SP2101. Mm. Okay, I'm just, you guys, wide open for interpretation and personalization. Um, I think that's part of the fun of gridded patterns, um, is that it's not, at least for me, when I'm given a gridded pattern, I'm like, okay, so these are the shapes I get to work with, and then I get to go from there. So you can definitely, like, make it as intended, or you can just go wild. And I'm kind of excited to see what you guys do. <sighs> I'm so excited. All right. Talked about fabrics that'll be listed, skill level. So like what I talked about, um, I really did want to give you guys a range from like very beginner patterns to more intermediate, slightly advanced patterns. Um, because we're not all at the same sewing level and I recognize that a lot of the costume viewership is very new to sewing. So I wanted to cater to that as well as like everyone else. So there will be like a range of skill level. Um, the skill level is not going to be listed anywhere. Um, but like as I do pattern launches, I will like tell you guys, these are intended to be beginner patterns. These are not. Like I did with um, SP2101, the birthday dress. It's not intended to be a beginner pattern. So if you're a beginner and you get that pattern and you're intimidated, I get it. <laughs> this is not intended for beginners. You can still do it as a beginner. Just take your time. Um, sizing. Yeah, so we've talked about it being one size and gridded um, and how I thought that was the most inclusive way I could do it with my current skill level and knowledge. We talked about Patreon, um, creating a pattern club tier. Um, which will be like the $20 a month tier, so a little bit more expensive than some of the patterns 
um, but I will throw up like a free pattern from the catalog every month for you guys with that tier. So yeah, oh, it's just, I'm so excited. I'm going to like spend my weekend like listing all of these and making them look as good as possible. And whew, I just living the dream, man. If I would have told 16 year old me that like within a decade, I would have a pattern line. I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> I wouldn't have known how this would have been possible. So huge thank you to all of you for enabling me to literally live my dreams. So let's see, we've got a couple more minutes left. Do any of you have like questions or comments about the pattern launch? Because I want to make sure I like answer everything and you like are as hyped up for this as I am and like we'll just we'll just do great things my projected numbers already have me at like hitting that um sustainability mark for april which i'm really excited about i didn't think that that would happen i thought it would take a couple months to hit the sustainability mark i'm just I'm so excited I'm so grateful that all of you guys have enabled this um oh that's so cool congratulations i think you're referring to the hitting the sustainability mark yeah i'm super excited about it i didn't think um when i originally like threw out the idea of doing the um pattern launch on instagram i got a much bigger reaction than i expected um and with the like a roi like return on investment kind of math that's super in that's included and in all that feel really comfortable about this covering um, the cost for April. So I will give you guys an update on that, like post launch, um, cause I'm sure you guys are like curious and excited. Um, but this is also really exciting because like I had some big, like if you guys remember my 2021 goal setting video, I had big goals set for this year and things that would like change my content, like lookbooks was a different thing that would change up my content. And I've put out my blouse video is basically a lookbook. Um, the video coming out showing um, all but like two of the patterns in this launch. Um, I mean, it's um, a lookbook. It changes up my content. I have some, um, what's it called, Disney content coming up, which I think you guys will really enjoy. So I'm excited. There's big, big things happening and it's just I just sometimes think about it and get really excited <laughs> <coughs> it's all super cool and I'm really excited hey me too all right we have not quite hit an hour but it seems like that's about as chatty as we are yes Amy Disney um, <laughs> Amy's working on a Disney pro Amy, which is swimming in a sea of estrogen is working on a Disney project too. And we have been exchanging ideas and thoughts and help. And I love her Disney project. Um, uh, anyway, we are just about to the hour mark. I have run out of things to say. Um, I don't think you guys have any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, I hope you guys are as excited for the launch on Monday as I am. Um, post launch I will update the description of this live video to also include the link so for those watching in the future there's a link. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Whew, I did a lot of talking. Now I'm so excited. Okay bye guys.